Hey guys, it's Kelly. Welcome back. Today I'm going to be sharing my 10 best purchases of 2020. So I saw my friends Andrea Matiliano and Samantha March do a Sephora version of this video where they shared their 10 best Sephora purchases. And I was starting my list and I realized I was adding products that I bought from other retailers. So I decided to open it up just to my 10 best purchases. Now I will be doing my wrap up videos at the end of the year as I always do talking about the best and worst products of 2020. But usually when I film those, I try to keep them exclusive to makeup that released this year. Cause I like them to be like the actual best products of the year. Whereas in this video, none of these are new, none of them released in 2020, but I waited until now to buy them and I'm so happy that I did so let's go ahead and hop into it all right let's start off with the most affordable product in this video this retails for three dollars this comes from the brand elf and this is their glitter glue this has been around for quite a while now and I always felt like maybe I didn't need a glitter glue I don't usually use a ton of loose glitters however I have purchased a few more recently so I wanted a product like this just to have for days that I need it but I find myself using this a ton, even if I'm not using a loose glitter. Sometimes if I'm using a palette and it has glittery shades in it and I notice that I get a lot of fallout from them, I'll use this first. And not only does this amplify the shine, it makes everything look a lot bolder on the eyes, but I get less fallout. They last better throughout the day. So this little $3 product is fantastic. And this tube, I mean, I'm sure that it will go bad before I completely use it up. There's so much product here, especially for the price. I highly recommend this. I purchased it off of ELF's website when I was making an order, but I'm pretty sure you can find this at, I've heard people find it at like the Dollar Tree, so you can get it for less than $3. You can find it at Target, a lot of drugstores, and I highly recommend this glitter glue. Okay, I have two foundations to mention. The first one is a powder foundation. I really love powder foundations and I feel like they're harder to find. There are not as many on the market and I wanted to try the brand Plain Jane this year. So the brand is Plain Jane Beauty, like I said, and this is called the Get Loose Powder Foundation. So I purchased the shade three, which is called I Am Vibrant. I don't think I did the best job shade matching. I mean, it is a good color match for me, but the undertone is a little bit off. It's supposed to be neutral, but I find that it pulls a little bit pink, so I probably would have been better off with a warm undertone, but that's okay. If you like the original Bare Minerals foundation, this is extremely similar to it. So I wear Bare Minerals Matte Powder Foundation, which I just filmed a full face of Bare Minerals. That's gonna be coming this week. I'm excited for that to go up, but I wear the matte version, and I would say this is kind of similar to the matte version, which I don't think is matte. I think is very satin and natural on the skin. This is just so easy to use. It's a fantastic product. Plain Jane Beauty is a small black owned brand and I highly recommend checking this foundation out. Okay, a pricey product that I bought this year and I have no regrets is this blush from Charlotte Tilbury. So I picked up a few of these beauty light wands this year. I picked up a blush, bronzer, well, contour and highlight. This color is the standout of all three. I bought the shade Pink Gasm. I got this off their website actually. See, that's why I couldn't do just Sephora. Sometimes I buy from the retailer or the, the brand instead of big retailers. This blush, I really think is undupable. I'm trying to find a dupe for it, but because, okay, here's the thing. It's not really a blush. It's kind of a rosy highlight on the cheeks, but it's not a glittery highlight. It's just like a wet highlight. That's a rosy tone. So on the cheeks, it looks fantastic. This is a look I cannot achieve with other products. If you guys have seen any of the Charlotte Tilbury makeup tutorials that they do on the models or that Charlotte does, when I wear this, I get that vibe. Like the natural, but a little bit done up, very glowy, very like rose gold. That's kind of their signature color. With this applicator, I like to do just a couple dots on the cheek and then blend it out with my finger. I find that I get the best result when I tap it in with my finger. And I would say with all of the products in this packaging, I recommend doing them before powders because sometimes they can pick up some liquid products I do think you can use after powders, but I don't find that these work as well after powder. Okay, who was waiting for this one? This is one of the Moon Dust shadows from Urban Decay. I had the shade Lithium going into the year and I recently picked up another one and this is Space Cowboy. I'm sure if you have been around here for the last month, you've heard enough about this eyeshadow, but it's such a cool topper shade. I use it in most of my looks. 
So it's really just like that glittery top coat. It adds some sparkle on top of anything. I'll wear it on its own with no eyeshadow and it kind of gives the eyes like this wet glossy look. Or I like to spice up any look by adding this over top. I just pick up a little bit on my finger and tap it on. Such a great purchase. So glad I went for it. I know that these are pretty pricey for one single shadow, but I've definitely gotten my money's worth out of it already because I've used it most days. Bare Minerals Mineral Veil. I think I picked this up in the Ulta 21 Days of Beauty sale. I'm pretty sure that's when I grabbed it. I'm so glad that I had the encouragement of the sale to pick this up because this has become one of my favorite powders in my collection. It's so blurring. It's a really fantastic finishing powder because if you have like bronzer or blush that you don't think looks as seamless as it could, dusting a light layer of this over top really just blurs any of those imperfections. Also, it makes the skin look so much smoother. I have the version that has sunscreen in it. It has SPF 25 and I specifically picked this one so it could be a nice touch up powder throughout the day and I could feel like I'm getting a little more sunscreen. I mean, I wouldn't rely on this as your main form of sun protection, but it is nice to touch up if you need a little bit more. But they also have plain translucent ones. So glad I picked this up. It's mm, probably my favorite powder. All right, a palette. This is from Natasha Denona. This is the Mini Nude. No, the Mini Glam. I don't have the Mini Nude, but I'm considering getting it. So this is a little five pan palette. This, so perfect for on the go. Such a fantastic formula, like truly one of the easiest eyeshadow formulas to work with. I hesitated picking this up for so long because I was like, okay, well, it's just five neutral shades. I have those. But I'm so glad that I grabbed it because the formula is incredibly blendable and it's perfect for just like on the go, quick, easy looks. You don't have to think about it. Like these shades are my perfect go-to neutral shades for an everyday look. All right, a skincare favorite of the year. I don't think I've changed my skincare routine too, too much throughout 2020. I kind of like to stick to what I know works for me, but I did pick this up to try. This is a peptide serum from The Ordinary. It's the Argyrolene Solution 10%. I have already purchased a backup bottle of this. This is fantastic for any little fine lines on your face. I struggle with um, some lines on my forehead and I apply this morning and night. I actually, I don't really apply it all over my face. I squeeze a little bit out into my hand, pick it up, and then kind of apply it in targeted areas. And you, I notice such a significant difference with this. It minimizes them so significantly. Now, with this type of product, you have to continue using it to continue to see the results, but this bottle is $7 and it's done wonders. A lip liner favorite. I am going through a lip liner phase this year. I, for the most part, before the last, like, second half of 2020 we'll say i pretty much use the same lip liner for every single look i cokey warm nude or or cokey nude either one but those were my go-to's all the time still love those still my favorite formula however i've turned into a big lip liner lover this year i love that they can kind of transform a lipstick i feel like if you have a few different lip liners in different depths. You can get a lot more out of lipsticks that you already have. You can pretty much completely transform the look of a lipstick with a different lip liner. So I picked this one up from Milani. I love this so much. This is the shade Spice. This color specifically has been really hyped up for a while and I finally grabbed it when I was making an order at Ulta. I think I was like trying to reach free shipping or something. These are fantastic. They're so creamy and I don't usually love pencil liners that are in a wooden pencil, but this one really doesn't feel like a dry wooden pencil liner typically does. So this is a fantastic formula from Milani. It's called the Color Statement Lip Liner. Fantastic price also. All right, another foundation favorite of the year. This is amazing. I This foundation, when I'm filming, there are foundations that look really great in person and they, those foundations usually don't look as great on camera or foundations that I think look fantastic on camera don't look as good in person. Did I say the same thing twice or did I say what I was trying to say? Where I'm going with this is that this foundation truly looks fantastic in any form. It's great in photos, it's great in videos, it's beautiful in person. This is probably my most reliable foundation. Like if I had a day where I needed my makeup to look perfect, I didn't wanna take any risks, this is the one I would reach for. So this is from the brand Oma Beauty, another black owned brand. The foundation is called Say What? And 
Weirdly, I thought this was a, such a terrible match for me when I first bought it, and while it is a little bit tan for me, well, when I have a self-tan, it's actually a pretty good color, I actually think this is a really good match for me. Not really good, not really good, but when I wear it, I never think it looks as bad as I think I do. What am I trying to say here? Whenever I start to apply it, I think, okay, this isn't a good shade match, but once I get it blended out, I don't know. It kind of feels like it just morphs and then matches my skin. I don't know what the deal is, but the shade is called Fair Lady T2W. Definitely more of a yellowy undertone, but like I said, I find once I've blended it out, once I've finished the rest of my face, it tends to match pretty well. So this is a thinner consistency, which is what I do like because I find that they look the most skin-like. They don't look as heavy. The coverage is buildable. The finish is just, again, very skin-like, very natural. And it kind of takes on whatever primer you prep with. So if you're going with something really glowy as your base, you can get more of a glowy effect or you can mattify it depending on what you use beforehand. Long wearing, like I can't say enough good things about this. This is fantastic. And the final one, one more product from Charlotte Tilbury. I picked up this mini. So the reason I grabbed it this year was because they finally offered it as a mini. You guys know I'm team minis. I just did a mini collection video. I'll link it below. This is their Filmstar Bronze and Glow. This is a fantastic formula. I don't regret not buying the full size because I still think that this little mini will last me forever, but this bronzer, or no, the contour, so natural. Here's the thing though, if you like a really pigmented contour shade, this is probably not for you because it does apply rather sheer, but because of that, it is the most beginner friendly product that I can even imagine. It just blends itself into the skin. You can't go overboard. It's not gonna look patchy. It's not gonna look streaky. The highlight is also on the more lit from within side, which I love. Packaging is fantastic. I'm so happy that I picked this up. I almost didn't. It was actually a subscriber that DM'd me and was like, you know, they sell that in a mini, you should try the mini. And when I was making my cart for the VIB sale, I threw this in, I took it out, I threw it in, and I'm glad I went with it. Those were my 10 best purchases of 2020. No regrets here, I think those were all amazing. I'm so glad that I picked them up. Many of them have been on my wish list for a while and I'm so happy I finally went for it and bought them. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will go ahead and see you in my next one. Bye.